Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Removal Sanity, and today I am reviewing Nightmare Reaper on the Series X, developed by Blazing Bit Games and published by Fear Demic. So what is Nightmare Reaper? Nightmare Reaper is a retro inspired FPS with looter shooter and rogue like elements that breaches the wall between classic and modern gameplay. The premise is that you are a young lady who is in some sort of a sane asylum and that various psychiatrists have been investigating you specifically. The only way to figure out the root of why you're here is by investigating your nightmares and blowing the demons to pieces with awesome weaponry. The game boasts about 90 designed and procedurally generated levels, over 80 different types of weapons containing attributes randomised from over 30 enchantment types, a 2.5 pixel art style, a skill tree based on Game Boy Advance minigames and a unique plot to keep you engaged. First up is accessibility. With regards to accessibility, there is a plethora of options to tweak and adapt the way you play with this game, from cursor color, weapon sway, color presets, hit notification, and item flash. You can even turn off mini games should this be too much. There is no ability to remap your controller layout yet, and this may be for your heart the biggest issue for those with mobility issues, but I have been reliably informed this is coming in future patches. Next is gameplay. Retro FPSs are having a big resurgence at the moment, which is a godsend for those like myself who have gotten a bit bored with the modern day shooters. After just coming off the amazing bolt gun review, I was intrigued what this developer's take on the genre would be like. What caught my eye was the looter shooter with rogue-like elements tag, and if they can indeed pull off such a task with a 90s retro aesthetic. You start off waking up in a hospital room with the sounds of other patients' screams ringing in your ears. This effectively is your safe house hub world outside of the nightmares you soon explore. This starts off with just your being your room to explore, but as you progress, more and more of the asylum unlocks, allowing you to access new areas and new zones which will help you progress stat-wise, whilst at the same time providing you valuable information on why you are there. Small details are drip-fed to the player after each level is completed in the form of doctor's notes, which builds up a bigger picture about your character's upbringing, about her terrible life, and what her led her into the state she is in. I won't spoil it, but it did keep me captivated in finding out what led her to this. After exploring your surrounding area, you then decide to take a nap, and the real world of exploring your nightmares begins. From the moment you enter, you're attacked by hellish demons, monsters and zombies. Killing these will drop coins, ammo and potentially new weapons, with combo kills increasing the amount of coins you receive. You only start off with two slot items to begin with, so management of your inventory on the quiet side is essential when choosing the right weapon. These weapons are often found with assigned levels and attributes like alternative fire modes and specific buff stats. These level grades are based on the tried and tested grades of common, uncommon, rare and legendary, with the higher grades coming with more stats and attributes. Working out the best one to use is all about trial and error, as finding something you want to keep will come into play later on. Drops are random, and the itemization system will easily be understandable by most roguelike or RPG vets. Once you reach the end of a level, you'll get a score screen right out of Doom, where it's stating kills, hidden treasures found, loot picked up, and completion stats. It is at this point another unique aspect takes place, and the game prompts you to select one weapon from the previous level that you like to keep. The rest are then sold there and then, and you are left with your chosen weapon for the next <laughs> round. This was a great idea and forces you to read carefully the stats of each weapon so you can get the very best starting points on the next level. Speaking of stats, during the level you may encounter a doctor who will give you some potential upgrades stroke stat alterations to one weapon. 
These can be costly, but sometimes worth every penny. So keeping an eye out for him is essential. However, the majority of your character's skills and upgrades and abilities can be done anytime, even in the heat of battle or at your home hub. And this is with the game's three main skill trees, which are a collection of Game Boy Advance mini game cartridges. Here, you load up a cartridge and move around its hub world to find a stat, buff or ability you wish to purchase using a specific currency. Then, play a mini game to get it. There are three Game Boy Advance mini game cartridges to unlock, each housing tributes to gaming classic genres. The first set of skills is tied to a platforming game that is pretty much the first overworld map from Super Mario 3 and unlocks basic skills. The second set is tied to an animal battling game similar to Pokemon and unlocks more skills but also adds modifier pills like less damage. The third is tied to a 2D side-scrolling shooter very much in the vein of R-Type and offers new abilities like kicking exploding barrels, ledge climbing and even having a pet with you that can have its own small set of skills and stats. For me personally, these were a joy to play and were a great distraction to the main event of killing should it become tiresome, with the added benefit of it directly improving your character and weapons when you do decide to go back in. Currency for these different trees are not the same, with the first being picked up by general coins from enemies' deaths, Topaz for completing Pokemon-like battles, and Jade for an arena mode where you survive wave-based enemies. It is possible to disable having to deal with these skill tree encounters by disabling in the options. As previously mentioned, levels are a mixture of designed and procedurally generated levels, meaning things change every time you die. Not that you actually die, you wake up at the hospital and have to restart the level again. The level's layouts are unique with each new playthrough. However, what stays the same is hitting switches, finding keys for doors, or locating suspicious walls with cracks in them to kick through and find hidden loot. The procedural element does do a great job at generating unique levels. However, there is some sections that occasionally recycle, like a lift to a higher room or a particular trap section. Regardless, I never felt like I couldn't work out where next to go or how to get there thanks to the mini map often pointing out doors to areas that need to be explored. They are also not too large either, with most coming in about 10 to 15 minutes playtime to get through. The best bit of course is the gunplay, which is waist deep in pixelated gibbs and guts. A section of dry humour blended in with ultra violence does us exactly what it's supposed to do keep you entertained. The game wants to make the player fight by pushing the player towards the enemy to keep them in the action for longer, with the reward of doing so replacing lost ammo and health. With so many enemies, it is easy to be hit, so constantly moving, weaving and even wall climbing to help take down bones is paramount. At no point do I feel bored or not engaged in this, and it is a true joy to play. Next up is graphics. The game's visuals are superb and a blend of 2D sprites alongside 3D environments which hold a good steady frame rate. The 2D enemies pivot around to look at the player and when looked from above appear as paper thin pixels, exactly how they would look in the 90s. But there is also modernised effects here such as volumetric shadows and lighting which can make the game look amazing. The environment itself, though, almost has a Minecraft look to it, with this basic pixelated palette, which I suspect is more to do with the procedural tile generation than maybe an aesthetic choice. Regardless, the environmental theme changes after each chapter, which comprises of three levels, shifting from mines, towns, forests, to hospital wards and cities, and even space, all helping keep the freshness of the environment dynamic. The game has 80 plus weapons to seize, all which have unique modifier possibilities like ice blast on an axe or health steal using lightning from a book in the game's bid to keep things looking fresh. 
The effects from these can almost be too much and can often be seen as a vibrant colour when battles get hectic. Combine this with the wacky weapons like a mop that cleans up blood and by doing so rewards you with more coins or hell razor cubes that capture enemies and then you can summon them to fight for you later on. Either way, you'll be hard pressed to take your eyes away from the screen. And finally, sound. The game is partially voiced, with the voice actor doing a superb job with the limited voice work available in reading out the notes that tell the tale of our protagonist's fate. But it's the soundtrack by the great Andrew Holshot, which perfectly applies a set of metal tracks with thundering and headbanging riffs to the battles that really keeps your blood pumping. But would you expect anything else from the person who did the scores of Dusk, Quake Champions and Doom Eternal? <laughs> Environmental sounds are also excellent, with the highlight being your safe zone. Whilst this may be a safe zone, it will never actually feel safe, as weird occurrences will happen. Shadows appear and disappear, lights shatter, and things break as you go near them. Combine this with screams, footsteps, and clawing against the walls. You truly have a sense of the madness of an asylum ringing through your ears. Weapon sounds also are superb. Guns sound lethal when fired, and even more so when coupled with the impacts the devastating sound makes when it hits its target. My recommendation here is a good quality headset to rock out to the score and bathe in the sounds of Gibbs going everywhere. And this leads me on to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for Nightmare Reaper is must own. The game's fast, dynamic and intense combat combined with its creative selection of weapons and novel upgrade system shines a bright pixelated light above those of the genre with only a few meeting its intense gaze. The developer here has hit it out of the park and I want more of what they are selling. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £24.99 or approximately $30 and depending on your skill and patience would give you about 35 hours worth of gameplay. With the procedural generation in terms of gameplay plus the mods, game plus and even speed run options you can easily double the time. This is a superb game and it's clear to see that this is a wonderful labour of love with lots of character that goes beyond the sum of its parts. This is a fantastic retro inspired but modern FPS hybrid that's found a place not only in my collection but in my heart. Well ladies and gentlemen that's it. I do hope you like this review and if you do please like, share and subscribe if you so wish. And if you'd like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming and I'll see you all again soon.